we are in a different historical moment right now where before a hundred years ago when immigrants chose to come to America this was basically the only land that wanted their skill set unfortunately unless we fix our broken immigration laws there are other economies other countries now that are welcoming immigrants with open arms because they recognize that these individuals are fundamentally by the way their DNA is made up whether they've crossed the Rio Grande or right now they're at, at a lab at MIT they have an entrepreneurial spirit that folks globally, in order to compete globally, desperately need. I'm Maria Teresa Kumar. I'm the president of Voto Latino. We recently launched back in March, I'm Ready for Immigration Reform, recognizing that at the end of the day, immigration is an American issue fundamentally. We have 50 million Americans that are directly impacted, not including the 11 million that are undocumented. So how do we make sure that this is, again, we're all bearing the burden, but also the opportunity of immigration reform? But not only are we looking for ways to ensure that congressional members do the right thing, but Voto Latino, along with NCLR and LULAC and a couple of other organizations, we last year announced that we were going to do a report card and actually rank members on how friendly they were to the immigration movement and to immigrant families. And we recently announced last week that we are going to start, that, we're, we're, that we unveiled the report card and most of Congress, some Democrats included, failed. And it's because they're not, they're not realizing that this is such a personal emotional issue, but also it's something that we, we have to have a franker conversation with the American people. Right now when you listen to the dialogue, folks believe that immigration and the need for immigration is a, an American luxury. It is not. Without immigrant labor of all skills, it actually our, it, our economy will be significantly impacted. And until we can start being grateful for the labor and their, their sweat, their tears, their aspirations and their dreams, then that's when we can, we can recognize that we're all in this together. We are in a different historical moment right now where before, a hundred years ago, when immigrants chose to come to America, this was basically the only land that wanted their skill set. Unfortunately, unless we fix our broken immigration laws, there are other economies, other countries now that are welcoming immigrants with open arms because they recognize that these individuals are fundamentally, by the way their DNA is made up, whether they've crossed the Rio Grande or right now they're at, at a lab at MIT, they have an entrepreneurial spirit that folks globally, in order to compete globally, desperately need. And we have a luxury that the moment you step onto American soil, folks consider themselves American. And you can't, you, you can't beat that. But unless we embrace them and fix it and have, again, an honest dialogue with the American people that immigration is not a luxury. It's not a nice to have. It's a need to have in order for us to be economically viable and continue being the powerhouse that we are. We have to make sure that we're fixing it. And we have to make sure that members of Congress understand that clearly. Right now, when someone hears comprehensive immigration reform on the Republican side, it sort of scares them. So I think one of the things that a step forward is how do we actually rebrand immigration reform? Their idea of talking about it, you know, a jobs bill, and I think that's brilliant. What can we talk, how can we actually reframe and rebrand a lot of this so that it becomes welcoming to the American people and digestible to a lot of the Republicans that need to vote for it? And the reason I say that is that oftentimes what's happening is that the moment you hear comprehensive immigration, it's not playing well to, to folks because they don't quite understand what that means. It just sounds like amnesty. What are strategies that we can do is how can we start talking about using language differently so that people all of a sudden aren't you know, blindsided by not basically not wanting to hear further and digging deeper into the legislation once they, once they, once they hear the name of the bill.